It had been three days His parents couldn't find him But the scribes and the Pharisees Were all gathered round him As a boy in the temple Speaking with such wisdom They were all amazed at what he Jesus. I mean, let's all that can and will stand this morning. Come get around the altar and pray. All those can get around the altar today. If you want to pray right where you are, that's okay too. We just believe around here it's important to get to the altar and get to God. Get around the foot of the cross and uh, we're going to pray. Pray God meet with us today in a mighty way. Well, I've already felt it through the choir this morning, through the Sunday school hour this morning. I sure appreciate what God's doing. But let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we love you. And God, we're so thankful, God, for this day you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, once again to come in the house, Lord, today, Lord, to be with believers of like faith. And God, we thank you, Lord, for those that made their way out here to your house. Lord, this morning, I'm glad, God, that the rain didn't stop us. Lord, I, Lord, go back to the message I preached just a couple of weeks ago on no rain. And Father, we, we saw what no rain would result in. But God, we did see what the results the rain would bring. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for the physical rain today. God, we thank you 
for the spiritual rain today. I thank you, Lord, for the song that we just sang in the choir. God, that right in the middle of it all, we know that your son, Jesus Christ, will meet there with us, Lord, and love on us. We thank you for that today. God, we thank you for the presence, your presence in this place already, God, this morning, through the hearts of the people. And Father, I pray today, God, you'd make yourself more real than you ever have. And I pray, God, that you'd just show up, Lord, in a mighty way, Lord, in our hearts and our mind, in the singing, Lord, today, in the preaching today. Give us wisdom of words to say today that would represent you very well, God, that would bring people's attention to a holy God today and a loving Savior. Father, I pray that everything that I say today, God, you'd hide me behind the cross, get me out completely out of the way. Lord, I don't have any wisdom today without you, God. I don't have any words today. Lord, without you, there's no way today, God, without you. And I, Father, I pray, God, you'd just hide us behind the cross today and you preach, Lord, from heaven today, the glory of God would fall. Father, Lord, most of all, if there's one lost that gets saved before it's eternally too late, God, those that are wayward today would come to an old rugged cross, Lord, and just fall at the foot of the cross and love on you. And God, look up to you. And God, repent, Lord, and draw strength, uh, Lord, from you. Bless the sick today, God. Heal and lift up. Lord, I already looked around today. There's a many people out of this building today that's normally here. Some's due to the weather. Some's due to the sickness today. Some are traveling today. God, we know that. But I want you to reach out in the homes, God, and bless them wherever they are. If they're on the road today, Lord, keep them safe. God, if they're just sick today, Lord, heal them and lift them up. And God, I just pray you'd bless and lift up, have your way and way in this service. All the prayer requests that are going out around this altar, Lord, right now, God, you hear everyone at the same time. Father, would you meet that request today? God, I pray they'd be sincere, Lord, in everything they bring to you. And God, you just lift it up. God, you heal it, Lord, in a special way. God, get in the homes and hearts. Uh, today and have you will and way father in all things that'll be done uh, in this place lord we love you lord we thank you for what you've done for us and god i'm going to stand right now and praise you for what you're about to do in the service this morning and father we give you the honor the praise and the glory for it all and we ask all these things in christ's wonderful name and all god's children said amen, amen. boy it's good to see you in the house of the lord this morning it's good to see the good number today on a rainy day Amen. How many of y'all remember the message I preached just a couple of weeks ago on no rain? Amen. Listen, God brought out the super soaker today. Miss, Miss Rose is back here today, but Brother Tracy is missing. Amen. It's raining outside. Y'all know where I'm coming from uh, there. He's about to get that head wet. I was the only one that's ever been able to do that, not get shot. Amen. And so I appreciate the Lord and what he's doing, but I appreciate you braving the rain today and coming out. Listen, it's just another day in the Lord's house to me, whether it's raining or sunshine. I'm glad we got heat. So I was asked this morning, though, did we actually put a heat pump in this place, in this place or not? But I hope y'all are warm enough because I am. Amen. I just went and turned the airs down a little bit so y'all grab your jackets today if you need them. But we appreciate you and love you. Thank you for being here this morning. Several things I want to mention uh, this morning in way of announcements uh, is this. Tomorrow night, uh, we are going to be leaving here at no later than 545. No later then 5.45 tomorrow night. We are going to Reedsville to listen to Brother Kidd tomorrow night. He's preaching there uh, in Reedsville. And if you want to go, we'll be driving the bus, the van, or whatever it takes. But if you want to go and ride the bus, be here at 5.45 tomorrow afternoon. We're going to all take off and go. Those of you who like to go uh, and hear him. I've not heard him in a while, so I'm due for some field kid. Amen. And so if you want to go, we're going to have a great time. Matter of fact, if you're going to go, try to let me know today uh, sometime or early tomorrow so we'll know that, that you're uh, coming with us and we don't leave you anywhere uh, on top of that, so just remember that. And also, let me announce this. We have a Junior Youth Christian Movie Night coming up on October the 31st. It is our alternative to Halloween. Uh, we're here with our kids, Miss Jennifer and Tabitha, and a lot of them are putting that uh, on. And the ages 5 to 18 can come. Anything below 5 years old can come, but you got to stay with them and babysit them. Amen? But they can come and be there with them. They're having pizza and chips. And fruit for dinner. They're having devotion fellowship. And then they're going to have a Christian movie. Uh, and uh, this says, we encourage you youth and juniors to invite a friend. And so if you guys are going to come that night, we would appreciate that. And thank Miss Jennifer and them for putting that on uh, and taking care of that. And then listen, here's something else I want you to start. Make sure you try to get the word out. This is not just for our youth. November the 8th, we have a youth rally here on Friday night. 
at 7 o'clock. Amen. I'm asking all of our church, give up your date night that night. Hey, bring your date to church that night. Amen. Go buy your groceries on Thursday night and, uh, just, and then come here on Friday night. Uh, for the youth night. We want to pack this place out for our youth. Listen, we need to encourage them, amen? If our youth are going to come to the church house on Friday night to worship God, we got a special singing group. The AG family is going to be here. Brother Deal is going to be here preaching. If they're going to come here on Friday night, we at least ought to support them. Say amen right there. Amen. And we ought to try to get everybody we can. They're reaching out to churches all over this county and surrounding counties trying to get the youth to come to the rally that night. And I want to pack this place out for them that night uh, for the glory of God. And so we would love for you to come and be with us November the 8th on that Friday night. It starts at, let's see, the, the, the pizza is going to be ser uh, served at 5 o'clock and the service starts at 7 o'clock uh, that night. And so if you're going to come, we would love for you to come and be a part of that uh, also. And then let me, let me, I got a card here that looks like I need to read. Let me grab this and grab my glasses because I probably need them. Amen. This has got the million dollar check in it, so I need to see. There, there are good people in this world. Uh, it says, I thank my God, God upon every remembrance of you. Thank you all so much for the beautiful flowers uh, and the delicious fruit. It's great to be a part of New Life Independent Baptist Church. We love you all so much, Preacher and Miss Lowry. And uh, thank you so much for that. Thank you all for your prayers for her. And she is recuperating well. The preacher is waiting for her to get completely recuperated so he don't have to do dishes and cook anymore and those kind of things. Amen. And so pray for him. But we appreciate them and appreciate what God has done there in them. Let me just say this to you. Uh, tonight, uh, brother, there's going to be a, a pastor evangelist here. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, evangelist missionary here uh, tonight. Uh, brother Dan Farrell will be with us uh, tonight. And hopefully, brother Jimmy Caudill is going to be with him also. Brother Jimmy will be singing a couple of songs for us tonight in the 6 o'clock service. Brother Farrell is going to present his work tonight. And so if you'd like to come back and be a part of that, it would be great also. And then let Jane and I say this to you. We said this Wednesday night. We cannot thank you enough for what y'all did for us last Sunday. We appreciate that from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, we have ate out several times this week, amen, including last night again uh, on these gift cards. I have went ahead and just started going to go out and get to the gym five days a week instead of three days a week now uh, because of all the gift cards and all the eating. Uh, but listen, we appreciate what you did. Thank you so much. It's, it's wonderful. And uh, we just thank God for it. My kid's been saying all week long, let me get a hold of them gift, them gift cards. Amen? And so we appreciate what the Lord did there. But thank you, church, uh, for that. You're, we're blessed, and uh, you're special to us. And we, pray. we thank you that we're special to you all, and uh, we appreciate that greatly. Amen? Any other announcements today? Miss, uh, the, go ahead, Miss Kathy. You want to say that, dear? That's right. See, Miss Kathy, they're about, that's November 11th and 12th, I think it is. They're taking all the pictures for the church directory. So if you've not signed up, see Miss Kathy for your picture taken, your address, and all that. Miss Lori. If you're a veteran and you're interested in participating in Veterans Day um, Amen. Miss Lori, are we doing that on the 10th of November? Veterans Day is on the 11th. Is that when we're doing that? Okay. All right. I kind of thought so. Just want to make sure. We want, you, we want you to be a part of that, and we appreciate all of our veter veterans. We'll be recognizing all of them uh, that day also. Amen. Anything else today? All right, Michael, come on. Let's take an offering this morning. All right. Let's get up and come this morning if they would. While they're coming, you can be finding page 113 in your songbook, Glory to His Name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer first, and we'll bless our offering um, this morning before we get started. Father, Lord, we're thankful, God, just to be back in your house. Lord, thankful, Lord, for the ones that's made their way out today. And God, we pray, Lord, you would take this offering we're about to receive. Uh, Lord, we pray you bless the gift and the giver. Father, we pray, Lord, for the pastor as he brings a message. God, just yes, give him the message Father. we need here today, a new life. And Father, if there may be one that's lost and undone, God, we pray something said or sung. God, would touch their heart. And, Father, they'd realize their need for a Savior before they leave today. Lord, thank you for what you've done, God, what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's all stand. 113, glory to his name.
say thank you for our visitors. Appreciate all you being here today. You are our honored guest if you're here visiting with us, so we thank you for that. Today I've got one item of business I need to take care of real quick, and then we've got some young'uns going to come and uh, sing for us this morning. I want to get Brother James Carthen to come up here uh, this morning. And uh, How many of y'all were here the night Brother James got saved? Amen. Y'all remember the story behind that? And uh, we're not going to tell all of that this morning, but he, has been, he was definitely a miracle from God. Uh, for God to save him. All, anybody gets saved is a miracle from God. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But God gloriously saved him here on a Sunday night. And we remember that. Just a week or so down the road, he's going to give that testimony. I'm going to give him some time to stand in the pulpit. And uh, he's written out some notes. And he wants to give that testimony of that salvation. If you've not heard that, uh, you need to probably try to be here. It's one of the greatest stories I've ever been able to tell uh, of what God allowed to happen that night. Uh, during that time, along with some others. I mean, God has done so much in here this year. It's been unreal. Uh, but James and I have been talking uh, for several months now about him uh, joining the church. And you said, Preacher, what took you so long? I mean, think about it. It's James Carthen. I'm just kidding. Amen. He knew I was going to get him this morning. Uh, but I did have him scheduled a couple of times, and he didn't show up on those Sundays. I'm thinking, okay, he done backed out and changed his mind. But uh, things happen, and so we have sat down with James just like we do everybody else, going over the Constitution and bylaws of the church. And uh, he knows where we stand uh, on things here, and I appreciate him, love him in the Lord. And uh, so he, James comes this morning and wants to be a member of New Life Independent Baptist Church. And I need somebody to move to make a motion that we make him a member of New Life Baptist Church. Say, Brother Mike Lewis makes that motion today. I need somebody to second that today. Brother Craig seconds that today. Any discussion at all? Go ahead, Brooke. <laughs> Brooke Cliff back out. They figure it's going to be him. We give him a hard time. Y'all got to know how hard a time we give him. But I can't wait for you to hear the testimony. Amen. If you are not here that night, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But when we share that testimony and I share with you what happened that night uh, during that time, it was a miracle from God. There's no question in our mind there was a miracle that took place here uh, that night. And, uh, but I told him I was going to bring him up this morning, and we'll, we're going to get that testimony in a week or so down the road on a Wednesday night or a Sunday night. Amen. But uh, everybody in favor of James Carthen being a member of New Life Independent Baptist Church signify by saying I. I. All opposed like sign. Hey, I heard some, <clears throat> but that was about all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Brother James, we, we love you, buddy. I love you back. <laughs> I appreciate him, and I, listen, I appreciate his testimony, I appreciate his friendship, uh, and what he's been to me, I'm going to tell you right now, I have, to, I have to beat him off of loving on me all the time, and I, I don't know if I've ever had anybody just love me that much, and uh, I appreciate that uh, in the Lord, and we love him, and appreciate what God, you know, I found out, and, and this, this is where God had to help me at over the years, uh, I, I found out that it takes all kinds, amen, and God has all kinds of people in every place all the time. 
Now, to me, it'd be nice if everybody was just like me. I mean, I'm just, uh, I see those looks on your faces, but I found out that wasn't going to happen, amen? So I'm now, now I'm glad that everybody's not just like me, but I'm also that glad that everybody's not just like you either. Say amen right there. Amen. But I love you in the Lord, and I appreciate what God does. <laughs> Brother Craig, hush up. Amen. I'm glad that God takes a group of people and puts them together in unity to be able to love one another for who they are and what they are and what God has created them to be. And that's the best part of all. Amen. But I appreciate the church. We've got a young group that's going to come sing for us today. Amen. And uh, they prepared a song for us. And Ian, you and Miss Ariel, Miss Kendall, y'all come on. They're going to sing one for us this morning. Yeah. Hold on just a minute. Miss Teresa's got something she wants to go with. That's right. After church this morning, for everybody that's going to the Bible Museum this coming Saturday, the bus will be going to the Bible Museum with our youth. If you're going on that trip, meet in the old sanctuary right after the service this morning with Miss, with Miss Teresa, okay? All right. Trusting in you for you know the plan that's best for me. So lead me to where you are, cause that's where I wanna be. So if I'm walking through a valley, don't let me walk alone. And if I'm
Amen. Those of you that are around the altar, you can stay there as long as you want to, as long as you need to is fine. And um, let me just say to anybody that may be visiting with us today, uh, if you need our altar, uh, it's always open, and our folk know that. Uh, I won't, chances are I'll not stop preaching, and I will not stop singing, unless God just uh, nudges us to do that. Uh, but we want our altars to be used, and we want God's people on the altar, and uh, we need to be reaching out to God. I appreciate these youth. Thank you all for that. I appreciate it. Listen, that's a big step to get up in front of the church and sing but uh, listen to you you've heard me preach around here if you've been hearing it all on wednesday nights and we've been talking about this uh thing of revival and how god's sending the rain and god is starting to change some hearts and he's changing youth uh he's changing some leaders in the church uh he matter of fact i told him wednesday night i believe he has changed your pastor to some extent and uh, i feel in all my heart that god's just given me a little bit different mindset over these last five months according to the word of god and what God has showed us, and I appreciate what the Lord has done and what He is continuing uh, to do. And I don't want that to stop. I'm glad God is sending the rain, not only physically, uh, but spiritually inside the church. Uh, God is about to crank us up a notch, and I praise the Lord uh, for that. What does that mean? That means change is coming. Amen? And uh, our circumstances may change. That means that challenges are coming also. That means that conviction is going to come. That means God, the cleansing is going to come. And those kind of things that we talked about there uh, through that. But God is going to do something great, and we know it. And so you be ready. As Brother Chris Hill uh, said this morning, in the opening this morning, we have to be prepared because we don't know what pitch is coming. Amen? But if we're going to step up to the plate and bat, then we ought to be prepared for whatever pitch comes our way. And I appreciate that. Turn your Bibles this morning to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to share a thought with you today that God placed on my heart. Uh, be honest with you, it's been six months ago, uh, and several weeks ago, I was back at it again, just looking at it and reading, and the thought came back to my mind again, and I read it, and I looked at it, and I studied it, and I laid it to the side. Uh, this week, God brought that thought back to my mind again, and I couldn't get away from it this time, and I believe it's God's perfect time of the day for what He'd have us to preach here from the pulpit this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 this morning. I'm going to start reading with verse 12. This is a passage of Scripture I've never preached out of uh, here, but it's got some thoughts in here that God has brought to my mind, and then He showed me some things just this week alone uh, that's helped me to finish it up. And I appreciate what the Lord uh, did in that. But let's read verse 12, chapter 15, verse 12. The Bible says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, listen to what he's saying here. If this is not true, if there is no resurrection, if we don't believe that, it's what Paul is trying to get across to the church at Corinth here because there were there's those there that did not believe in a literal resurrection. He said in verse 14, And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. It's of no use. It's no count at all is what Paul is saying. And your faith, is also vain. That means your faith is not worth anything at all. And then he goes on to say in verse 15, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. That means that your witness would be in vain also. And your witness is of no count, of no good. Uh, he calls it a false witness. If all of these things, if we're not going to believe uh, in the hope of a resurrection... He said the preaching's in vain, the witness is in vain, the faith is in vain. All the things we have here are in vain. He said, yea, when we are found false witness of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, there we go again, your faith is in vain. I don't know about you, but I serve a living God today, amen? 
I don't know about you, but I sir, listen, I, I don't believe mine's still dead and in the grave, amen. Mine's, still, mine's not in the tomb. I've been to the tomb. It's empty. And I, you heard me say before we went to uh, Israel, people said, man, I, I bet you couldn't wait to get to the empty tomb. No, that wasn't my most exciting thing. I already knew it was empty before I got there, amen. Listen, he'd already been dealing with me years, way many years before that, and I knew he wasn't there. The Bible said he wasn't there, and I believe the Bible uh, amen. God deals with our hearts, so I knew he wasn't dead. And I, I thank God for that, but it is empty. But it is the only empty tomb of a God that I know of. All the other gods that's mentioned throughout religion in the world, they still have a tomb with something buried in it. going to believe that verse 19 he says that, and here's where I'm going to take my text from today and get my thought from and it's going to probably be you're going to probably think where is he coming from uh, with this today because it is a little different than what you would probably expect here sometimes my mind gets out in left field sometimes I chase in the right field sometimes it just goes way out there and God gives me a, a thought and I, I just like to pounce on it if I can and and try to try to get somebody's uh, uh, attention with it but he says here in verse 19 if in this life only we have hope in Christ. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Can I say to you today, I believe with all my heart there are some very miserable people in the world today. I believe there are some very miserable Christians in the world today. I believe there are some very miserable churches in the world today. I believe there are some very miserable pastors in the world today. Why? We have put too much emphasis on this life here. And he said, if our hope is only in this life in Christ and what Christ can do here or what Christ you think Christ has done here that we are of all men most miserable. Paul is declaring here in these verses that there is no re if there is no resurrection, he's declaring that there is no hope. And he's also declaring this, you can read into this and, and pick up on this pretty good. He's not only declaring that there is no hope, he's declaring that there is no such thing as heaven also. Amen. If, there, if there's no resurrection, nowhere for Christ to be resurrected back to, then there is no hope and there is no heaven in that. And he went on to say after that in verses 14 through 17 here, all these things that we do are in vain. The preaching would be in vain. Our faith would be in vain. Our witness would be in vain. Everything that we say about Christ. Matter of fact, Paul says that it would be a sin to tell somebody about Christ if you don't believe in the resurrection. That's what he says here in verse, in verse number 17. He said, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. In other words, if you're going to tell somebody about the resurrection and you don't believe that, then you are practicing sin is what Paul is saying right here. Think about that. Man, we, look, I just try to tell somebody about Jesus. I just try to tell somebody about, about, about Christ in heaven because the Bible says, I don't, I don't believe that myself. The Bible says, Paul said, you're sinning if you do. That's pretty deep, isn't it? I figured that out by myself this week between the help of the Lord, with the help of the Lord, amen? But he says you're sinning if you believe that. Now, I believe personally, when I began to look at this, and I thought about the churches, the church as a whole, the people as a whole, uh, Christians as a whole, I believe as Christians, there's a lot of time that we're so stuck in this life. We're so stuck in this life and what this life is, that we never take the time to see the Christ of heaven. We most of the time don't have a problem be believing in the Christ of this life. Amen? But listen, this life is going to end one day because the Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it is appointed unto men once to die and after this the judgment. Amen? There is an eternity after this. Amen? 
But if we only have hope in this life, in Christ in this life, we are of all men most miserable. And I believe that we are stuck in this life right here. And we're miserable because we cannot get a hold to the fact of who Christ is on the other side. We know what he's done for us here. We know that he's died on the cross. We believe all of those things. But we're still stuck here. And Paul said, hey, you got to get your mind off of that and get it over there. Amen. we got to move a little bit higher. We can't stay stuck here all the time and, and, and stuck in the middle of this. And I began to uh, think about all this thing. I, I, I got to uh, putting thoughts together in my mind. And, and I thought about this right here. That there's been many times that you and I, I know we've come to a crossroad in the road and we've wondered what to do and which way to turn and which way to grow. In my case, a lot of times, there's not even a, a crossroad in the road. And the reason I don't like to use a crossroad in the road uh, in this terminology here because if there's a crossroad in the road, we got, uh, if I said that hell was this way and, and, and heaven was uh, this way, that means we got another way over here. And I don't believe there's a purgatory and I don't believe there's a resting place. I believe it's either heaven or hell according to the Word of God. But I got to thinking about it the other day. Sometimes I believe we just come to a T in the road. We just come to a T in the road, and we got to figure out which way we're going to go. And as I thought about this thought the other day and thought, thinking about this, everything that I'm going to preach in a minute, I thought about this thought. This thought came to my mind right, this thought came to my mind right here. Which way is it to heaven from here? Which way is it to heaven? From here. I got to thinking about that thought the other day and I pondered on that thought for a while and, and I believe that there's a number of people sitting in churches all over the world today that have come to that T in the road. I believe they've got there and they're trying to figure out which way to turn. I, we were in Mount Airy the other day. We went, we took the, uh, the seniors out uh, on Tuesday and had a, had a great time while we were uh, gone and, and uh, Jane, Jane, a lot of times when I'm driving the bus like that, Jane will get on her phone, she'll use her GPS, and she'll be kind of be my, be my guide as to where I'm going to turn and what I'm going to uh, do so that I don't get lost up in there somewhere. Most of it, we knew where we were uh, going in the way, but we had got up in Mount Airy uh, Tuesday afternoon, and we were coming uh, out of Mount Airy. We finished walking the streets. We got on the bus, and we were going out, and I told Jane, I said, and we were right in the heart of the city, and I had been there in there a, a long time. I said, pull up on your GPS and give me the nearest way back over to 50. South. I knew 52 South, went back to Winston-Salem. I've driven that road many, many times. I'm going back to Winston-Salem. I'm going to catch 40 back uh, down to 49. I, I, I knew all of that. And I said, give me the best direction to get me, get me back out there. Well, she pulled up uh, the GPS, and it said, turn left here. And then it said, go two miles and, and turn right or something like that. And, and just as soon as we turned left, and Brother Mike remember this, we got back as far from here to the road. I found I come up to a, I come up to a stoplight, and her GPS was going turn right. Uh, it's what it was saying. I'm, waiting, I'm thinking, wait a minute. Uh, I know where I'm at. And the sign right there says 52 South this way. Amen. And I'm sitting here looking at it. And I said, wait a minute. The sign says 52 South. I'm trying to determine which lane to get in because I know that I want to go 52 South. I'm at this T in the road. The GPS is saying go this way. And it already done told me in, in uh, two miles, I think it was. I didn't go a quarter mile. It said two miles. Turn, turn right. I'm like, hold on a second. Some, Something's not right here. I am sitting here looking at the sign. I know I'm supposed to turn left, but it made me start to question myself and which way I was supposed to turn. I want to listen to some little lady on the telephone tell me what to do. <laughs> Amen. And tell me which way to which way to go. And I'm sitting here looking at the direction, and I know my eyes are good. I'm driving the bus. I know I can see, and I know 52 South. There was no question in my mind where that road led to, but I began to doubt myself and I believe they've come to that point in the road. They've come to that T in the road. And there's no question in my mind. They know that there's only one right way to go. And for whatever reason, they can't figure it out. I know most of the time you get to places like this, especially if you've got several people around. You get to places going, I'm going, man, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. And you, got, you, got, you always got two or three people in with, well, I believe y'all. I think it's you believe all you. And how do you know? You don't know where we at either. I get to thinking about myself, why in the world am I listening to them? They don't know where they're at. I believe this, and they don't have anything. Their GPS is telling them to go the wrong way, too. I'm sitting here looking at the right way. Why in the world would I believe anybody? But if I know the right way, why not just travel the right way? But in life, a lot of times, even in the church and in the church house, even behind the pulpit, 
pulpit. Let me go so far as to say that. Even behind the pulpit sometimes, we can get to looking again, and, and the preaching gets done. And, and listen, I've had people say, I'm just as confused as, as, a, as, a, as a fly on a yo-yo. I don't know which way to go. Amen. I think we ought to make it perfectly clear when we're preaching the gospel, there is only one way to go. Amen. Amen. But I'm sitting here looking at things, and the GPS is trying to tell me to go another way. And, I, and I'm thinking, no, 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 I, I've got to turn this way because I know there's no question in my mind that 52 South runs back into Winston-Salem, and I am going that way because the bottom line was I knew there was only one 52 South and one way to get there. And so I got to thinking about this story the other day and reading the story, and Paul says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. God gave me this thought right here. Which way is it to heaven from here? Which way is it to heaven from here? Amen. I told y'all I was going to need that air this morning. Amen. I want to give you some, some, some things this morning. God laid on my heart and my mind this week while I was uh, reading and said, listen, there, there's only one way to heaven. But I want to give you just a, a, a compilation of, of things here that I believe you and I have to get to in our heart and mind to realize that way. And so I got to thinking about some ways the other day. And I believe here's one of them right here, which I think sometimes may be the most important way that I was looking at, I believe in order, in order for you and I to get to that crossroads and know which way to turn and know which way to go, we must go the way of reality. Amen. So what do you mean, Brother Mike? I believe that if we're going to make the right decisions for heaven, we have to have a right perception of heaven. Amen. I believe if we're going to go the right way to heaven, that heaven must be a reality to us. It right. must be real in our life. Thing. I ain't talking about some Bible story. I'm talking about something that must be real in our life. It must be real as the singing that we do. When those girls got up there and sing a while ago, and here's what they're saying. Hey, God, if you're not going to pull me out of this, hey, walk through it with me. It's got to be that real. God, if you're not going to get me out, just get in the middle of the fire and walk with me and everything up. I'll be okay. But it's got to be as real as the song we sing. It's got to be as real as the Bible we preach. It's got to be as real as the prayer we pray. Heaven must be a real thing in our life. We must come to a, 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 a mindset in our mind that heaven is truly real. It must be as real as anything you do in your entire life. Amen. Amen. It must be a reality to us. thought about this the other day. All of you know that I talked about going to Israel for many years. Why? Because Israel was real to me. Israel was a reality to me. I knew Israel exists. I believed in it all the way. I believed it's where Jesus was. I, I believed it's where he was at, where he ascended. Listen, I believed all of these things about Israel. It was real to me. That's why when it came time to, to go to Israel, I appreciate what the church uh, did for me, but they and I took the rest of the money, whatever uh, it took. It took about ten thousand dollars to go uh, on that trip, and it was worth paying for. I will tell you that. I appreciate what the church paid, but it wasn't probably even getting her to write the check to pay for the rest of that because it was real to me. It was something I desired, a place I wanted to go, a place that was real in my heart, in my mind, and I knew that if I could get there, I could probably be a totally different person than I'd ever been in my entire life. I knew I was going to see things that I'd never seen before in my life. Why? Because it was real to me. Right. Amen. The problem that people have with heaven a lot of times is not real to them. Right. Right. Amen. We may sing the songs, but that don't mean it's real to us. We may pray the prayer, but that don't mean it's real to us. We may go to church where they preach it, but that does not mean necessarily that it's real to us. You think about you think about a real place. Or you think about a real place that you've been in. I know some of us go on vacation sometimes just like we went to Israel. You go on vacation. I'll tell you why you plan for it. Because you know it's real. Hey, listen, you ain't going to plan for a vacation to go off somewhere you don't think is real. Listen, how many of y'all going to get in the car, take off the road, pack up, spend all this money, and say, I'm going to fly that out, but I don't know if the place is that or not. 
tell you why people sitting in the church house today are not prepared for heaven? They're not prepared for the glories of heaven. Why? Because it's really not real to them. It's still part of that fairy tale in the Bible. It's still part of what the Bible says. Instead of something that's real. We must come to a conclusion that heaven it's real. I believe if we ever come to a conclusion that it's real, we'll sing the song like it's real. I, I really, I, I thought, as a matter of fact, while I stood up here a while ago, I thought about this old song and I can't sing. Amen? Y'all turn to 110. My, Blake, I'd have to tell you what, Blake, come get on the piano for me. I, I'm going I'm to I'm do something here. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hey. came by me Wednesday night, he said, Brother Mike, I sure would appreciate them old songs. Why? Because they're real, Brother Mike. Yeah. Amen. Heaven is a real heaven. How many of y'all like to sing about real heaven? Yeah. 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 church wouldn't be able to say, listen, the world wouldn't be able to stay in the church because it is so real. Amen. How real is it to you? Are you looking forward to going there? Are you all on your next vacation? Yeah. Somewhere else, I'll 
You had plans to go there, but guess what? You ain't going to make it. Your family might go, but you ain't going to get to go there. Right. That's how right. real is it? See, heaven's got to be real. Right. I believe, believe in order to get to that T in the road. And we're standing there. And we're thinking that I don't know which way to go. I believe we'll ever get the reality of how real it is. We're going to know which way it's coming. Right. Let's sing it. Let's sing it bottom row. Let's that last row. Let's see what that last row says. in the Bible, you can be seated. It's got to be real. And I believe that the way there is through reality. And if we don't get to the place, Brother Chris, it's free. You're right, dear. And if Jesus decided to come today, I'm okay. Sure. Amen. Why? Well, I, I know where I'm going. Yes, sir. I'm going to a better place. But listen, I'm going to get a lot more beautiful home I live in. See, God declared it to be real. Can, can I tell you this? I got to study this the other day. Now I got time to get out. I'll never finish this. Day. I don't even got to have a clock on what time it is. I didn't watch that. I didn't even know what it was. I got to look at this the other day. Y'all do realize Moses believed it was real. Amen. Uh, listen, Elijah believed it was real. I, I got to study looking at all these things in the, in the Word of God that a Abraham believed yeah. it was real. I, I, I'm going to say this. Paul, listen. Paul even had a vision of it. Mm -hmm. sure. But Jesus declared it was real. Amen. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You can believe in God, believe in me also. In my Father's house of men, man. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive that myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. See, hey, Jesus declared it to be real. Not, not only that, in the book of Revelation. Well, I got to read over that the other day in the chapel and carry on about to have myself time jumping up and down all by myself. John said this over and over and over again in the book of Revelation. John said, I saw. Amen. Amen. John said, I looked over in the heavens. He said, I saw. Not only that, John said, I stood. When he John said, I heard the voice of Jesus. Wow. Listen, yeah. you go read the book of Revelation, you'll find out how real it is. John said all these things. John said, hey, 
coming. Amen. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Paul had the vision. Jesus said it's real. John says it's real. We must come to the conclusion that it's real. Now, can I say this? And this is not a part of my message. We better come to the conclusion that hell is real also. If a Christian would ever get in their heart and mind that hell is real, heaven would look like this. But the problem that we have is hell is that storybook hell. Well, I understand that. No, 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 you don't understand what hell is. Hell is a place of torment. It's a place where people burn forever in eternity. It's a place where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's a, it's, a, it's a place of pain throughout eternity. It's a lake of fire that we never get to get out of. Listen, we must realize that hell is a real place also. And if we ever did that just for a moment, heaven would become so much sweeter in our life. And we desire to go there. And we prepare to go there. And listen, we, we would we'd pack up to go there. I don't want to leave my family behind. Because they're left behind, they'll be left in a place called hell. Because it is just as real as heaven is. God speaks twice as much about hell as he does heaven in the Word of God. But it must become a reality in our heart and our mind that it's real. Right. You've got to be like John. Paul said, hey, he's going to reveal it to you in the Spirit. How are you going to get the Spirit of God? Brother Mike, I'm just waiting for the Spirit of God. It must become a reality in our life. I got to thinking about this. It is a way of reality. Let me just say this, and I don't have to close in here in just a minute. I, I, got, I got to finish with this thing, but it's going to take me a while. And uh, it all relates to that rock you was mentioning a little bit, Brother Mike. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you right now. Mm-hmm. And I will come back eventually. But I'm going to tell you, you, you got to think about this when you come to the funeral road also. It's not only the way of reality. what the word of God said, Jesus said that it is a narrow way to get to heaven. It's a narrow road. Turn with me real quick. Turn with me real quick, if you would, to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Can I say this? Jesus teaches us here that not all roads lead to heaven. I want you to understand something. We're living in a day and a time. Matthew chapter 7. Look at verse 13 and 14. The Bible says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Can I tell you why they do that? Because heaven and hell has never been a true reality in their life. It's a storybook Bible, but I'm talking about a true reality where you sit down. Look yourself in the mirror one day and you look at that person you're staring at and you ask them the question, is it real? How many of y'all remember the message I preached in here and Miss Kathleen 
Carver brought this message to my heart and mind years ago. And um, how many of y'all remember the message I preached on is he real or just some Bible character? Matter of fact, I preached part of that at her funeral. Let me just tell this story. If I have to quit right here, I'll quit. Tell them, Brother Randy, I'll quit. No, that's the only thing I'll worry about in this church all the time. Amen. We were not here. How many of y'all was here when this happened? You part of that stuff? There's a few of us. Let me tell this story. I promise I'll just close right here. We were about to get up and go. We were having a tent revival out here on a Sunday night. Started on a Sunday. It was Mother's Day. We were starting out here on a Sunday night. was in church every time the doors opened that she could possibly be here. She came because she became real in her life. Amen. Amen. And she passed on right here in the church. I preached part of that same message. I wouldn't build the message. Is he real? Or just another Bible character? I preached that call to call. But for the first time in her life, When she got up, Amen. when she got up, I, I remember probably one of the first phone calls she made to Jane, or she came to Jane after that. Listen, when she got up, this is how real it was. 
Kevin became the issue. Jesus became the issue. Amen. When she got up, she came to James and he said, this thing I want you to go get you. Mm-hmm. Back to my community. Now you're the way. I need to go back and get it because this is my community. Right. And I need to get a cut back to Jesus. He said, I've been living in the community and I still want to see you the way you're living. He said, I've been living all these years. only one way. It's the narrow way. It's not the way of the world. It's not good works. It's not good behavior. It's not baptism. It's not denominationalism. It's not associationalism. It's salvation through the blood. greatest friend, loved him in the Lord, one of my mentors, but Dr. Wintry had to come to me and said, Brother Mike, there's another way. I'd have said, uh-uh, as much as I respect him. I'd have said, uh-uh, I'm going to say Jesus' word over your word. Right. He said here, any in at the straight gate. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many there be that go in there and out. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Look what he said. And few there be that find it. Few there be that find it. Why do you think Jesus said that? I'll tell you why. Because it's only going to become a reality to a few of us. Unless they're going to hear it, it's going to be another story they'll tell. They're going to walk out the church doors today and these other days and go on about their business. Which way do you get to heaven? The truth. It's the way out. It's the way now the way. I'm going to preach on this. I want to just tell you this name and let you think it ain't piano for me. It's the way of the rock. And I cannot wait down the road to show you what Christ showed us this past week that God has just blessed my heart with all week long. Let's all stand our feet today. Every head bowed, every eye closed.